Welcome to the Copper King Mine and Railroad. Today we're going to talk about more train wrecks. So stay tuned. Today we're going to talk about more train wrecks. We will start with this great picture, this locomotive hanging over the edge. Looks like you almost hit the outhouse. That would have been bad. Now the steam is still coming out, so they must have got up there to take that picture pretty soon after it happened. Here's another one. This is a uh, locomotive number 30. And you see how high it is over the town of Bingham. We have a couple of pictures of that. Looks like it just about went over all the way. Here's another one. This is a sad one. This is a uh, February 15th, 1942. The boiler exploded on Utah Copper Locomotive 105. Now it killed the engineer Joseph Paulson and the fireman Reese Thomas and it injured the brakeman Edward Anderson. The explosion took place at 8.05 in the morning inside tunnel number three on the Bingham and Garfield railroad line. Locomotive 105 was heading back to the mine from the Magna Mill with 52 empty ore cars. Returning tender first. Now that was the practice they used. They used is they ran the tender first because they didn't have the turning around ability at the mine. Anyway, that was putting that put the brakeman in the head of the locomotive, and maybe that's what saved his life. So look at these pictures of this boiler explosion. Man, they really did some damage on this motor, this engine here. It's 105. Now, what is amazing is that the 105 was repaired and returned to service March 11th, 1943. So that's pretty remarkable. They got this back on the road. Now here's some pictures of some other train wrecks. Looks like this whole train's right on its side. Looks like it's up in Copperfield somewhere up there. It's high mountain railroading, pretty dangerous stuff. Here's another two pictures of a boiler explosion, it looks like. That would be on the Bingham Garfield line, too. Now, this one is a wreck out in Magna Yard, December 30th, 1952. Now, it involved the Denver and Rio Grande Western GP7, number 5112, and Kennecott Baldwin. 901 and Alco 902. Thankfully, no one was injured on this accident, but look how much damage was done here. Fortunately, not all the wrecks were this bad. Some just involved one or two cars. Others just, the motor just went off the rails. We called it in the ditch. With the constant moving of the rail in the pit or the dumps, the amount of overspill was coming out of the ore cars Rex was common occurrence at the mine. So, so much so that the foremans actually carried a set of inside and outside frogs to put the trains back on the tracks. Now look, note this electric motor right here. and He's got some frogs attached right to his motor. So maybe it was prone to going into the ditch, I guess. In my last train wreck video, I showed pictures of this February 15th, 1912 wreck. When this Shea engine went over the side and went through this building. Now there's a lot more pictures of this accident, so let's show them here. These first picture shows on top of the buildings right here and all this damage up here. Actually see a skylight right there, an old-fashioned skylight. That's kind of neat in some of these pictures. Let's see what a mess this made coming down through here. And then the other was at the front of the building and see where the trucks of the engine came through. It's just lying there in the street. That is so interesting. I guess they see the wallpaper up on inside some of those buildings. Now it said that Charles Coughlin lost his leg in the accident. Now there's a guy standing there in some crutches without a leg and I wonder if that was him. Now, this was a big event at the time. That's why there are so many photos of this accident. Now, the picture shows them trying to remove this boiler. 
that was left of the Shea. It took many, look how many teams of horses it took they was using right here. I think there was, I think I counted at least 10 horse teams that was trying to pull this out of here. And they had, actually had to tear down some of the wooden building right next to it to get this boiler out. Look at that, and even the damage of the brick on that one building at the end there. So we just have a lot of pictures of that accident there. Now this picture shows the Copper Belt Railroad, and that's what that Shea was on is the Copper Belt Railroad. And look how close it is to the town of Bingham. Here's the railroad line right there. That's, that was taken in May of 1914. You even have a, here's a newspaper clip of that 1912 wreck accident and then also a, he even made a postcard out of it so this was interesting the more research i did on this accident revealed that four of the crew members perished also two men died that were in a building below in a bank building and then eight more were injured so it was a bad accident the sad thing was that the accident was said it was caused by some disgruntled employees maybe strikers they actually greased the rail and the train can slow down so it caused it to go over the edge. Also, I think the building, that, one of the buildings that it destroyed was a shoe or a boot store or a repair shop. You can see these pictures of all these boots laying around in the box, this boot box right here also. Now this is another interesting thing. To capitalize on the event, they made these little souvenir shoes with the date on the sole of that accident. Now, my friend Larry Sachs actually has one of these shoes. And I took a picture of it right here. Can you see it? So let's end with this picture. This is up in Highland Boy area. Looks like it's the G-Line Bridge. It's all wood right there. And two waste cars have went in the ditch right there on the edge of the bridge. And Two guys are sitting there, probably part of the track gang. They're just waiting to get it cleared out of the way. And then they'll come down and repair that rail. So that's more wrecks at the Bingham Canyon Mine.